All right, welcome back to another video. So today I actually wanna talk about a new way that you can actually share your dot files for like Hyperlint, Neary, you know, whatever it is, it really doesn't matter, with, you know, other people and be able to just manage your dot files in a, you know, completely different way than, you know, what you're used to. So essentially to be able to do that, you would have to use my DCLI tool, which is basically a tool that you can declaratively manage your packages on your system and has, you know, some other tools and things like that, features that you can, you know, pin different apps and, create modules and install different, you know, package modules. So as you can see here, I have uh, these modules, you know, down here. So I have my main app. So like these are apps that I like to have like on pretty much every install. So basically I can install this module onto my system and then run DCLI module enable and then enable this, you know, specific module. And that'll, you know, enable all of these packages and install them all, you know, in one command instead of having to do pacban s and then, you know, list every single one of these and remember the actual name for them. Um, I can declaratively, you know, manage the packages in here and then not have to, you know, really worry about it because it's always here. It's always in this folder and I can, you know, get it back in my repo whenever I want to. So basically, what I did was create modules um, up here and I have um, all these different module, you know, packages where I used to do it is have my dot files up here and then have a separate script and module for each one. So here's like all the dependencies for my Neary option here. And then the install script is uh, ran after all of these are actually installed through the DCLI tool automatically. And then it would, you know, run that and install it. And my scripts would be in a separate folder over here. So now you can actually put all of those in one folder in one directory. So essentially I have my B dots hyper folder over here. And so it has everything you need in this actual folder. So nothing is outside of the actual module itself. And actually I can call this module as b.-hyper um, as the directory itself. So if I actually bring down a terminal here and then do dcli, oh, there it is, module list. If I go up here, you can see that I have a b.-hyper um, as an actual mod module. And it has, you know, 32 um, packages, you know, in that actual module there. Uh, so I can call that and enable it and then install it um, onto my system just from, you know, enabling the module itself. So that's kind of the um, easy way to do this. So like basically anybody else using the DCLI tool, I can actually share my entire directory with them. So just, you know, copy and uh, send this directory directly to them. Now, mind you, I am working on a actual GUI uh, for this where I'm going to be able to, you can be able to share and, you know, post your uh, dot files and different modules and things on there. And then other people can download them directly into their Arch config uh, repository. And then you just install them straight from there. That's coming. Um, you can look at my previous video to kind of see where that one's at right now. But right now you can see I have the actual hyper, um, you know, configuration here. It has everything that you need to, you know, install it and all the GTK theming, uh, my fish, you know, uh, configuration, my fast fetch. It has uh, my kitty uh, configuration. And then also has my dank uh, material bar, which has like all of the settings and stuff you see for my bar up here. So it has everything that, that I need. It even has like the logo that, you know, goes up in the top right hand corner there. And then I have all of these YAML files down here for the actual packages themselves. And so what's cool about this is the module.yaml is like your main module on uh, to actually like run the post install script, um, which the scripts are in here as well. So the script is right here. So you don't have to worry about having the scripts, you know, located anywhere else. So it, using the relative path scripts and then the actual install script there. And then also it has the package files. So I have, you know, sourced all of these uh, packages that you, the YAML files that you see here into, you know, separate options. This way, if you do, you know, install someone else's, you can, you know, take out things and remove things that you don't want and it's easier to find them. So if I want like default apps, which I have Nemo as the actual uh, file explorer. So if I want to, you know, switch that out and put Thunar or something, you know, I can easily just, you know, change this to Thunar. And then I can change, you know, Kitty to Alacrity or whatever it is. But it, just keep in mind, whoever creates their own module, they're going to theme what they want to theme. So maybe, you know, Alacrity and uh, other terminals aren't themed as you want it. So you'd have to be, you know, mindful of that. But at least you have the power to change and, you know, configure anything that you want. If I don't want Zen Browser in here as a default package, I can delete that and, and add whatever I want. If I just want Firefox or whatever the, the option is before you even install it, it's not going to mess anything up because it's just a package that's being installed. And then dependencies. 
are just in there. And then I have hyper packages. So these are all like the hyperlint packages, hyper paper, the, you know, portal for hyperlint, slurp, grim, that's display. So, you know, set your monitor, you know, configuration, everything, pi uh, piperlin for like the zoom feature and the actual little like drop down terminal thing that I have here as an option. So those are all those features. And then quick shell, I have like a, a switch option where you can switch between Noctilia and um, DMS shell. So I have those in that, in that package and then theming. So I have like my theming packages. So the Capuchin uh, Mocha option, the Tela Purple Dark icons that I have done here, and then my Babata um, cursor theme. So yeah, so everything's in there. And so basically you can just install this. So what I'm going to do right now is actually run the install on a brand new install of Cache OS and kind of show you the, the whole process of, you know, getting it installed and everything and installing, you know, DCLI as well. So I'm going to run over to that real quick and then show you. All right. Uh, so now we are on the other computer with my capture card. So this is my first time logging into this Cache OS install. So I'll go ahead and log in real quick. And of course, you get the little bar at the top for any new Hyperland install when you first install Hyperland. So I'm going to do super Q, and then I'm gonna just going to do nano.config slash hyper slash hyperland.conf. And then we're just going to comment out that warning. And then I believe it's super R to bring up. Yes, it is. Okay. So super R to bring up Rofi. So we're just going to you know, save that. And then, so we got rid of that bar. So everything is good there. And then we're just going to clear this and I'm actually going to open Firefox. And so we're going to just install the uh, DCLI tool. So if I go to gitlab.com slash the black Dawn slash DCLI, It'll bring the DCLI tool up here. And then I'm just going to copy the install, you know, script right here and then paste it over here and go ahead and install it. And then since it uses Rust, you need to make sure cargo is available. So you're just going to hit yes to install Rust up and it's just going to install everything here. And so this is kind of a tutorial on how to install, install um, DCLI as well, but I'm going to actually be installing my configuration, which you can do as well. All right, cool. So now it's compiling with cargo for the actual DCLI tool, and then it's going to place the DCLI tool in your user directory to be, you know, available system wide for the tool itself. All right, cool. So that's been done. It's, it's installed it into, you know, correct directory. And then I'm just going to, you know, put in my password. And then it does say that I can install uh, time shift as a dependency, but I, Cache OS comes with Snapper. So I won't install that, leave that alone. And then, so this is your first computer. Um, this is being installed on. You can run DCLI in it to actually configure the arch config file into your doc config folder. Um, that way you can start, you know, adding your own modules, adding your own packages and, and you know, creating your own configuration that way. Or you can actually, if you do have this on a, on another computer and you already like uploaded it into a Git repo, um, you can also do DCLI repo clone. It'll ask for the link for your uh, repo and then you can, you know, import that. Uh, clone that repo into this new computer and it'll set up a new for you. So yeah, so you can either do it that way um, or you can do the DCLI in it, but I'm actually going to, you know, close this one and open up a new terminal just to make sure everything's, you know, synced and, uh, and working now. And then I'm going to do a DCLI in it. And then if you want to install my exact configuration, it's dash B. And this will install my configuration, but it won't back it up to any like repo. You have to create your own, you know, backup to a repo if you want to. So this won't connect or pull or do anything for that. But it does give you my entire, you know, configuration at the, you know, time of uh, where it's at right now. So I'll do that real quick. And then so it's going to clone my arts config from GitLab. All right, so that's been successfully installed. So now with DCLI configured, now I have the actual arch config directory installed. Um, I can do, I'll close this out, open a new one and do a DCLI validate um, just to make sure the configuration is good. So yes, it is. It does have three warnings. Um, it's just saying that like you shouldn't go you know deeper than this max level of one nested module uh, name there, but that's completely fine. And then by just saying some of these are not direct, you know, YAML files in the, in the modules directory, which is fine. So yeah, so now I'm going to clear that and then I'm just going to do a DCLI module enable. 
And so now I can see all the modules that are available to enable on the system. And so these are all my modules because we just installed, you know, my config, my arch config directory. And so you see here we have the uh, b.typer one, and that's the one that we want to install. And so I'm just going to go to and then hit enter. And then it's asking me if I want to sync all packages, uh, you know, right now. And so if, if I, when I hit yes, it's going to start installing all of the packages. What's well, going to show me what packages and start installing them and then run the install script. Or I could hit no and then, you know, run DCLI sync when I'm ready to. Either way, you can do it. But I'm just going to go ahead and yes for the sake of the video. And then it's going to install all of these packages. So these are all like the dependencies and packages that's going to install on the system for these specific dot files. And then as you saw um, previously, I have that post install hook that will run afterwards for the bash script. That's going to put all of this in the correct spaces for you. So I'm going to hit yes and then put in my password. I'm just going to create a backup um, automatically. So DCLI automatically creates a backup after every sync and any update that you do. Because you can also update your system with DCLI. Um, so you can just do DCLI update and it'll backup your system and not run any you know pinned items or anything like that for you. And so I'm just going to go through this installation process here. And obviously this portion can you know take a minute because it'll have uh, quite a few packages, you know, to install. But yeah, so while it's doing the actual install, like I said, I do plan to have a GUI able to uh, go and select a Piper, just the regular one, not the Git version. And then you're going to hit Q and then enter um, here. But I'm going to have an actual GUI that uh, will enable you to select any modules that anybody has uploaded. So you can have the ability to upload um, new modules and the ability to download new modules, you know, directly into your system. That's going to be a nice, you know, easy way to do that. And I feel like that will be, you know, as long as you have DCLI, you know, installed on your system, you can just grab a module and install it. And there's a bunch of great different, you know, modules that people could create and, you know, make available, not just dot files. Like I have one for controllers where it installs um, all of the controller inputs uh, for Steam. So that way, like uh, all different types of controllers like Switch, uh, D input, PS5, all the controllers will, you know, start working. And also I have a post install script for that one that it installs all of your UDEV rules for different controllers like the 8 Do Pro 3 and the 8 Do Ultimate 2, as well as like the, the Switch Joy-Cons you see there and I believe the Vader 4 Pro as well. So, so it just automatically, you know, does all that for you. So people that, you know, don't want to go through the hassle of doing that, they can just install the module and then be done. So that's kind of the, the goal here <laughs> in creating this tool is... Being able to share things back and forth to people very easily and be able to manage your system, you know, declaratively and um, be able to reproduce it very easily. So, yeah, so it's, it's just going to go through the in install here. I'll wait for it to it finish and I'll be right back. All right. So as you can see, it just finished and it's just showing you everything that the install did. So all the packages were synced um, successfully. And then my install script did the rest of this. Um, so it, it created a backup of anything that you, you know, already had on the system and then placed it with, you know, my kitty and fish and all the different files that I have. And then as you can see, like the actual theme has already changed over here. You don't, you just don't see the bar and everything, but, uh, get full effect. You want to log out and log back in, um, or you can do a hyper, uh, reload, which I suggest just either rebooting or, um, logging out and logging back in. So I'm actually just going to do a pseudo reboot here. And then, so once it reboot, we should have be presented with the DMS bar and, you know, the cappuccino theme and, you know, my, my whole uh, configuration there. Hopefully that is what happens. All right. So as you can see here, we're back into the system and then I'm just going to go ahead and log into the Hyperland session here. So yeah, so it looks like everything uh, everything worked. So you can see I, I have the uh, Babetta Modern Ice cursor there, and I have my bar at the top here. It's already themed and, you know, ready to go. Um, and then all the key binds should work now, so I should be able to do, like, super enter, and I should have the Piper kitty term drop-down option there. And then I should be able to open my Z editor here. And I can open a project and just do dot config slash arch config and so yeah so the arch config is here and of course i can't stand anything being in light theme so what i'm gonna do is 
go to extensions and just enable the cappuccino theme on your mocha uh, to fit the rest of my theme here. <laughs> um, and then, so like I said, everything should be themed now. So if I I'll open my file explorer, which is Nemo, um, everything's themed there. It has the tele purple dark theme and everything. So yeah, so it looks like everything you know worked. And so this will install my entire you know configuration. And then you should be able to do the shell switcher um, option as well. So I just did switch. Uh, to, oh, I just switched to DMS because that was the default, but now it'll switch to Noctilia. So you see the Noctilia bar is now here, and we're just going to skip the, the setup there. So I did not actually add my Noctilia configuration in there, which I probably should. So that's why that looks like, you know, the default, but I can switch back to the DMS option. So yeah, so it looks like everything is, is working good and everything's configured the, you know, the way I had it on my previous system. So it's also, you know, reproducible uh, way to get everything back up and running on a new system very easily. And then uh, obviously once I get the, the GUI and everything up, that'll be another, you know, easy way to do this as well. Um, and, and people can create like a repo or just have that module available to download from a repo. Um, for anybody to be able to, you know, add to their own configuration, which would be a cool way to do it. So let me know in the comments below. This is something that you'd be, you know, interested in trying or maybe creating some modules for everybody else to to use while I get the, you know, the GUI and everything set up. Um, hopefully, you know, by next week, you know, mid next week, I'll have a, uh, you know, first iteration of that um, GUI that you guys can start trying out. But like I said, this is obviously all kind of in, you know, alpha beta stage, getting everything, you know, figured out and kind of kind of just taking you along the journey as I develop everything. Yeah. So if you've been enjoying my content, you know, please consider liking and subscribing. Um, you can support me, my Linux and development journey, either on Patreon or becoming a member on YouTube. But other than that, I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace.